Here and now, here we are. This is Steve Struggle and Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. So the war continues. I hear that the Zionist state has bombed Beirut again. And uh, they're trying to make a life unlivable uh, for all the uh, all the other peoples that are living around there. And uh, well, now even uh, in Beersheba, I, I heard this morning from Al Jazeera that a Bedouin has uh, taken revenge on a number of people in the bus station there. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Well, there were big demonstrations yesterday in the U.S., I think around the world, there'll be more today. Um, I'm very happy to see them, see the demonstrations because with the um, international, well, with the international repression against students on the campuses, many, it, it, one could think that there is no opposition to the, to the, there is no support for the Palestinian movement in some Western capitals. The schools, the school administrations, I can't prove this, but I would say in, in conjunction with um, the intelligence agencies have found, are, find, are looking for ways to silence dissent and will have to take the, take the demonstrations off the campus and put them in the public square. And that's a good thing. So um, I'm happy to see that. You know, I sent you an article which has gotten some traction um, that Hezbollah had agreed to a, I want to say a ceasefire. I'm not sure what the details were. We, we haven't been told the details. The, day, the same day that Nasrallah was murdered, was martyred by the Israelis. Hmm. It just shows me whenever you're involved in negotiations with Israel regarding ceasefires, they intend to kill you. Hmm. They they use that as a lure. Hmm. To maybe, locate, maybe to locate you, send some spies in, hmm. get some intelligence, because almost 100% of the people that they have negotiated with in Hezbollah or Hamas have been, have been martyred. Mm -hmm. um, it also brings the question, the role of the United States and France in perpetuating uh, the genocide and the, the militarization of Lebanon and the United States, and Lebanon and, and um, the occupied territories. Because France was contacted, and France usually has not been mentioned in this conflict too much. So they're obviously a party to the conflict since they were contacted by the Lebanese regarding the agreement of Hezbollah for a ceasefire. I thought that that might occur. I hadn't shared my views with people uh, because Hezbollah would be aware, would be aware of the impact that military attacks on Lebanon could have on the economy, on the infrastructure, on the hospitals. And I had come across a, a Turkish TV news report, which was saying the same thing. So I said to myself, well, Hezbollah is a patriotic organization, fundamentally, to, to Lebanon. And they would not knowingly do anything to bring harm to their country country so it made sense to me if if they could find a way to um postpone it or prepare for such attacks so it made sense to me to hear that brother nasrallah had agreed to such a uh cease at least a, a temporary halt to hostilities mm -hmm. it made sense to me so i have to wonder if there was such an agreement no one said, said anything about it after, after he was murdered. Only the, only the Turkish, only the um, Lebanese prime minister. The United States knew about it. Israel knew about it. France knew about it. And they kept on killing people. And they kept on killing people to, to this day.
So I hope that our viewers will keep in mind that when you're dealing with negotiations with um, a, a, a double-talking criminal such as the Western capitals, che, che Guevara told us you can't even trust him this much. He said that in the United Nations, he made a speech. You can't trust him this much. And that was 60 years ago, Che made this, state, this speech, and it's still true today. No, I noticed that there was a parallel condition, you know. <coughs> Hania was assassinated uh, at the point, you know, where Hamas and the resistance movement in general would agree to a permanent ceasefire. That would mean, you know, no more October the 7th. So if this Zionist regime, you know, claims that they're fighting in order to stop the recurrence of another October the 7th, then they had it, you know, they could have claimed victory. But no, they didn't want an end to the war. They want the war to continue. So they assassinated Hania, who had agreed to a permanent ceasefire. Now, Nasrallah, who had agreed to a ceasefire in Lebanon, because Hezbollah has a certain responsibility to uh, the um, to Lebanon and the people of Lebanon, and so they take that seriously, and they didn't want to uh, just engage but in a in a war with a Zionist state, you know, against the wishes of the Lebanese people. Right. Even though, you know, there's a million Palestinians there and perhaps another million uh, Syrian refugees. Nonetheless, they can't, you know, take over the country and, um, and, and, and dictate, you know, that the country has to go to war, you know, because of their own particular conditions. So Lebanon, <coughs> Hezbollah, as a Lebanese organization, right. agreed to a ceasefire for those reasons to avoid right. a Zionist invasion and uh, and <clears throat> the massacre of another 25,000 Lebanese as happened in the last uh, <clears throat> incursion in uh, 2006 or 2000 at the time of the and then you know, there was also you know in 1982 when uh, the Zionist state invaded Lebanon it was then yes that there was 25,000 uh, Lebanese who were killed, in addition to the 5,000 uh, Palestinians who were killed at Sabah Shatila. So, you know, both cases, the uh, <clears throat> the leading proponent of a ceasefire was assassinated because the Zionist state does not want to have uh, an end to cessation of hostilities. They want the war to continue. War is the way in which they can survive. That regime survives on war. <laughs> and that's the only rationale it has for itself, war. Claiming that everyone else wants to have a war against the Zionist state and that they are only doing so in a self-defense posture, which is a lie. So this proves it. Now, the demonstrations are massive, occurring everywhere with rather minor consequences, you know, minor concessions being made. France, the president of France, has declared finally that France will no longer supply armaments to the Zionist state, not that it was doing any sort of big business there. It's Germany, United States, and, uh, and uh, the not so great Britain that are providing arms for the continuation of this war. And now the prospect of a war with Iran is looming. And uh, is the Zionist state, rather, <clears throat> is preparing to attack Iran in retaliation for the massive attack that took place <coughs> subsequent to the assassination of Haniya in Tehran, which is a violation of <coughs> Iran's uh, sovereignty, airspace, etc., so, the Iranian attack on the Zionist state seems to have been successful. The missiles have evaded the um, arrow and iron dome systems. And so now it's uh, an open-ended uh, question whether or not the Zionist state could survive under such conditions. And so 
the Israeli Jewish public is actually increasing its support from Netanyahu because <clears throat> they've been conditioned to believe that uh, in violence and increasing violence is the only deterrent and the only path to follow. They have uh, an Israeli expression for that, which is kind braira, which is actually Yiddish. You know, the Israelis, sometimes they use Yiddish in order to uh, reclaim a Jewish identity, which they lost. <coughs> kind Brairach means no alternative. So they can have conditioned themselves to believe that there's no alternative to war, that peace is not possible, and therefore the only thing they can do is fight war and to fight it, you know, to the uh, ultimate degree. And they think that that's the most intelligent thing to do. <coughs> it's a pathetic pathetic political culture there in Israel. And the Israelis, you know, are still operating on their um, gut reactions, you know, conditioned by uh, an educational system that is uh, geared to promote uh, the perpetuation of war and uh, the replication of a Zionist history without any sort of reference to Jewish history itself. And also a distortion of what the Judaic uh, tradition uh, <clears throat> calls for. The uh, <clears throat> the only sort of, you know, part of the, of the Torah that, that Netanyahu has referred to is the, uh, <clears throat> is the massacre of, of the, uh, of the tribe of uh, Amalekites that took place there supposedly. Only it wasn't in the original Torah. This is account of uh, supposedly uh, the uh, promotion of a genocide against the Amalekites because they had attacked some scouts or some um, some uh, people in the nomadic tr tribe of the, of the Hebrews at the time of uh, Moses and uh, some uh, some uh, uh, some uh, of the uh, Hebrews that were falling behind in the uh, nomadic trek, <clears throat> were attacked by the Amalekites. And this was used as an excuse <clears throat> to go and massacre all of the Amalekites, including all of the civilians and all of their animals as well. And this is the uh, precedent that is cited by Netanyahu for the current campaign in, 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 in Gaza. So it's, it's pathetic, you know, a pathetic ignorance on the part of the Israelis, you know, that they're continuing to support this this mass murderer, Netanyahu. And they're suffering the consequences of it now. So we'll see, you know, what's going to be happening. But uh, they've been shocked because uh, an Israeli citizen, a Bedouin, has carried out a massacre at the bus station in Beersheba. And they think that it's all his fault. And they had no rational reason for doing so because of the uh, neurotic, mass neurotic uh, complex of that society. It's really quite pathetic, you know, because one would expect Jewish people to have a more sophisticated uh, intellectual tradition than, than that displayed by the Israelis presently. And yet, no, they've uh, abandoned their Jewish consciousness for an ideological fanatic uh, program and they're so proud to be Israelis that they couldn't care less about anybody else, including the Jewish people elsewhere, who are actually the majority of the Jewish people, even before <clears throat> October the 7th. And the subsequent uh, departure of 500, 600,000 uh, Israelis, uh, even before that, and uh, not even counting the Israelis who had already left previously, <clears throat> 55% of the Jewish population in the world of the Jewish people are not living in the Zionist state. Now it'll be something like 60, 65%. And yet Netanyahu claims to be speaking on behalf of all of the Jewish people, even though he has uh, no votes whatsoever from the Jewish uh, di majority diaspora. <clears throat> and the Jewish uh, majority diaspora is, has been letting them get away with it so far, allowing the Zionists, you know, parties to claim to be representing all the Jewish people, which is a lie. So, I mean, it's a very pessimistic uh, conclusion that I've come to. 
And I think that uh, the uh, the uh, solution is that the protest movement has to uh, take a, uh, a, a another dimension into consideration. That is, you know, speaking directly to the Jewish people presently, the Jewish protesters who are uh, uh, very numerous and have um, very many movements that uh, correspond to different generations, starting with Jewish Voice for Peace to going, <clears throat> if not now, to Not in Our Name, to Bend the Ark. And uh, there's another one I forget as well, the name of. And uh, they, you know, are speaking as uh, Jewish Americans to the American uh, general public. Fine. Okay, give them a more prominent place to do so. Allow the Jewish people to speak as Jewish people. <clears throat> Presently, all we have is, you know, these Jewish Americans who are speaking as Americans. They speak for Americans, and then, you know, at the very end of it, you know, if they get an interview, they'll say, you know, and I'm Jewish, so I couldn't be anti-Semitic. Okay, well, yeah, okay. But what about the Jewish people? What about the general Jewish population in America, elsewhere, that needs to be addressed and needs to be told that now is the time to speak up against genocide? Just as <clears throat> there was uh, a boycott of the Nazi Germany uh, conducted by the non-Jewish and uh, political culture at the time of uh, 1933. Now is the time to speak up and to deal with these fascists because they cannot claim to be speaking out and acting on behalf of the Jewish people. That is a lie. And so we have to address the Jewish people so that they can take the, the responsibility in hand and speak out, and especially to their Jewish relatives, you know, who are Israelis. And tell them to, you know to wake up and that they're not going to be dictating to us you know what we should be doing and, and, and what we should be murdering no we reject that course of action and uh, you know all of the jewish movements now have to speak to the jewish community itself uh and uh make them uh call for a, a halt to this uh, genocidal massacre in gaza and a halt to the uh, violence uh, that the uh, Zionist state, you know, is planning for Iran, Lebanon, Syria, even Iraq. You know, the Zionist state is uh, has uh, seven different fronts, and they uh, are intent to continue, you know, fighting on these different fronts, and they want to continue with the war because they think they can win, and that's the only rationale that they have for this war, that they can claim to be uh, winning the war, even though they're not. It's all sort of, you know, a matter of propaganda. Oh, my. I'm sorry to be going on for so long in such a pessimistic mood, you know, but <clears throat> I think that uh, we're in deep trouble. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Um, out. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about that, about your call that this this needs this message needs to be spread far and wide and taken up in the demonstrations, because currently that's not what's occurring. Um, and you've mentioned this a few times on our on our conversation. Um. What is it that is preventing this message from being taken up and taken out? Or is it being taken up and taken out in small numbers and we just don't know about it? What are your thoughts about that? Because the message is the message is quite different than the message that we're taking out, which is a, a general opposition to what's occurring funding and politically and militarily by the Western powers to support their proxy, which is Israel. You're saying it is a message from the Jewish community, from the Jewish diaspora, who Netanyahu claims to represent, needs needs to take a leading role in, in, uh, in uh, this struggle. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> and we've got to get a hearing from the Israelis. You know, we've got to get our 
our our uh, protest, you know, <clears throat> out to the Israelis because they're not being told about uh, about our protests and about the participation, mass participation of Jewish protesters, you know, in all of these actions, student encampments, general weekly demonstrations, and all that. There's large Jewish contingents in all those demonstrations, you know, but okay. they're not being made aware of this. So, so what you're saying, then, I, want, I hope everybody is, who is listening and watching is paying attention, because we're having a a conversation on a on a developing a new strategy, yes. and creating tactics that follow that strategy. Yeah, the strategy where you're suggesting is the Israeli population the, is not aware of the mass participation of Jewish people in in the diaspora in opposition to the Netanyahu government and the U.S. and the Western powers campaign, military, medical, nutritional, propaganda campaign against the people of Palestine. And you want to... And your 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 suggestion is that we develop a strategy that changes that, that and that and that the diaspora begins to challenge the challenges directly the narrative of the United States and Israel in carrying out these mass murders, yeah, and that the actions of the diaspora. And Jewish community in opposition be highlighted and and that the Israeli population be made aware of this. Oh yeah, this is a very crucial sort of, you know, strategy that needs to be followed <clears throat> because presently <clears throat> you, you know, Trump uses this, you know, he, he speaks to the Jewish Americans saying that they have to support Israel otherwise they're not loyal to their Jewish state. <laughs> okay. So, you know, the Jewish Americans don't know how to uh, respond to that. You know, they're sort of affected by that. They actually, you know, uh, back down because of such an argument. <clears throat> and, you know, the Zionist state, you know, presents itself as being the only uh, Jewish uh, state in, in the world. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, they, of course, conveniently disregard uh the previous, you know, and prior sort of formation of the Jewish Republic in Birabajan. But both of these projects are are are, are no goers, you know, because they're first of all, they don't uh, take on the, <clears throat> the the struggle against fascism and against anti-Semitism in the world as a whole. <clears throat> and two, they disregard the fact that. Uh, Jewish uh, Americans, Jewish Canadians, Jewish Quebecois, like me, uh, Jewish Argentinians, you know, all over the world, you know, where Jewish people live, they are of that culture. They are Americans. They are Argentinians. We are uh, Canadians, you know, but we're also Jewish. You know, it's a dual nationality. And to, to uh, deny the uh, American sort of identity of the Jewish Americans in the way that Trump has done <clears throat> because he has this paradigm of, you know, one nation, one faith, as he put it, and one goal, you know, like whatever that goal of this is, you know, this concept is the one that excludes the Jewish Americans on the basis that they are supposed to be Zionists. So Jewish Americans, you know, can be addressed and told, you know, look, you know, are you going to accept that? Are you going to accept that you are some sort of, you know, second class citizen? No. So this is the kind of an argument that is not being made, but that should be made. Okay. You know? So how do we get it made? I see, I, 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 I want to push, push it a little bit because we don't have a lot of time. Okay. We've seen uh, Israel right now, in, the, in my view, this is my view, the United States and Israel are licking their wounds from the Iran attack. They don't, kind of don't know what to do. And even trying to blame Russia. This is the most insane um, 
twisted narrative. Oh, Russia has something to do with it. So mm -hmm. be that as it may be. Okay, they're licking their wounds right now and planning something else. They're planning something else, trust me. Whenever criminals, you know, suffer an attack from another gang, and they, they, let's just say, I'm not saying Iran's a gang, but you know how that goes. They're yeah. planning a counterattack. So how do we get this message out? How do we get what you're saying out to these, the, the, the international audience we are trying to reach? Mm -hmm. Because without them hearing your message, they won't have the opportunity to say, "Oh, I, I don't agree." Because right now, that they, they, they are they are receiving the message. That's just, I think it's something to think about. How, 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 who can, what means or methods do we have to get that message out, and how can we do it? It's just it's just a thought to throw out there to you, to our viewers, so we can kind of, mm -hmm. you know, throw the pot a little bit, brainstorm. Maybe not here on on the broadcast, mm -hmm. but we we need to come up with some ways of. And not just now, because like it or not, Israel will exist a year from now. It, it It's going to be here for a minute. It ain't going nowhere, mm -hmm. And in my view. And if that's the case, we still have time to reach these international masses mm -hmm. in our countries and around the world. I think you make a very good point about about the Trump, Trump coming to the American Jews and saying this and them not knowing how to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like there, yeah, because sometimes politicians can throw something in the face of an ethnic group and the ethnic group don't know how to reply to the BS that's just been thrown at them mm -hmm. because they're not politically, no, I wouldn't say politically motivated, politically educated. They don't have the perspective yet of what is really being said to them. So, they, so, so, so they kind of hush up. Yeah. It happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't resolved that contradiction in themselves, you know, because they want to be Americans, but they want to be Jewish also. And they think that the way to be Jewish is by being pro-Zionist. And that's about as far as their consciousness goes. So the way to overcome this, and that's the last remaining pillar of support for Zionism, is that, you know, uh, the Zionist milieu that supports, you know, the state as if it is the only guarantee of, of Jewish security when in fact it is actually the source of Jewish insecurity, both within and without. So uh, all of the militants in the uh, protest movement must encourage the Jewish participants to speak out as Jewish Americans and speak to the Jewish community. The Jewish <clears throat> uh, activists have to be encouraged and asked to speak on the speaker's list as Jewish Americans and speaking to the Jewish people. You know, if, if uh, you know, some, you know, militant, you know, some prominent militant, you know, like does not do that, you know, like forget them, you know, take them off the speaker's list and put somebody on, you know, who hasn't had a chance to speak before, but who knows how to speak to the Jewish people. That's what's required. <clears throat> What about demonstrations that have that that have that sole focus? There should be Jewish demonstrations, right? Jewish right. Demonstrations That's what I'm saying. as such, yes. Right. And maybe we need demonstrations that have that focus. Hmm. I mean, I'm just I'm just saying because you go to the like I I, I went to a demo yesterday. There, it usually is a controlled speakers list. Uh, some organization organizations, you know, hmm. other uh, people selling items around the world. It's not like the sole focus is Palestine, Lebanon, no no money for Israel, a, a um, Nuremberg style trial, putting Netanyahu on trial. There's no, you know, like a militant focus on one thing. Hmm. So what I'm thinking this is an idea I'm having, just a, just an idea, or hmm. Uh, web programs that can't be that can't be um, zoom bombed. We we got the security straight. We got the security that nobody's going to attack the demonstrations. Nobody calling in. There's none, none of that. We got that straight. Mm -hmm. That would focus on that one thing mm -hmm. with one focus, mm -hmm. reaching that reaching from that population to the to the international and therefore 
Israeli population and other Jews around the world who have that same. Yeah. We're Argentina, we're in France, we're in the United States, we're in Italy, you know, and we have this diasporan identity and we have our own identity as nationals in these countries and we are opposed to what's happening. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just putting out an idea that we could take, you know, do do more off off the air. But if since that's not the focus now, you would, one, one thought is what you're saying is to demand it, to demand that this be a part of all the demonstrations, hmm. or create demonstrations solely for that purpose. Yes, yes. Yeah. There was a during during our uh, anti-war movement against the war in Vietnam. There was a Bertram Russell War Crimes Tribunal, and it uh, had a great impact. You know, it had a testimony from a, lo- uh, a, a number of prominent uh, academics who, uh, you know, took, a, you know, uh, deconstructed the whole American uh, imperial design, denounced it, and it uh, made a big impact. We need the same thing, but it has to be a Jewish War Crimes Tribunal. That indicts Netanyahu. Right. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, huh? right. and and takes him apart, right. you know, publicly in the name of the Jewish people who are denouncing, you know, Netanyahu as a crime minister and as a genocidaire. Oh, that's a French word. You know, uh, there's no equivalent, you know, in English. And uh, and then you know that's the way to take apart Zionism, you know, from inside the Jewish people. You know, like to attack Zionism from the outside. As far as the Zionists are concerned, that's considered to be an affront. That's considered to be an affront to a, to a Jewish self determination, and so they become more Zionist as a result, and not less Zionist. But when it's from the inside of the Jewish people, when it's a Jewish initiative that's denouncing Zionism, it's denouncing Netanyahu. Well, that's a, a wholly other, you know, matter, <clears throat> and it can be much more effective. So. That's what I'm advocating, you know, to the existing Jewish organizations that they have to sort of, you know, take on the responsibility <coughs> of speaking to the Jewish community in public so that they cannot, you know, be dismissed. Because right now all the demonstrations are being dismissed. You know, there was some minor concessions being made. Okay, so 30 contracts in England were uh, discontinued for war materials. Uh, for a certain brief period of time, you know, the 2,000 pound bombs were not being sent, you know, to the Zionist state from the United States, but I think they are now. I mean, you know, that's the only concession that they've made, you know, to all the mass demonstrations that have taken place. So the mass you demonstrations, like, you know, I have to. Do you think uh, people like Pickles Dean should be part of this? I, I, I don't understand the question. Do you, do you do you think people like Norm, Norman Finkelstein should be part of this movement we're talking about? Oh, Norman Finkelstein. I mean, I'm just saying there are people he doesn't out know how there to speak. who have a name. He doesn't know how to speak to the Jewish people. Norman okay, Finkelstein right. is just out there to make, you know, he's making a name for himself, you know, by denouncing the Jewish people. Okay. As okay. a whole. Well, then, you know, he's out. And he's the he's only, out. you know, savior you know, around, you know, like he's, he's yeah, into no. self-aggrandizement yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And, and okay. he also so, is, a, you know, he doesn't have any sense, you know, uh, of uh, of what the conditions are on the ground there, you know, because he's he's proponing. Uh, he 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 used to be sort of an advocate of the one state solution. Then he changed to now two state solution because he says it's the only practical thing. I mean, you know, two state solution is not a solution. You know, it's a way you know to put down the Palestinian people. A two state process is another matter, like the national initiative of the Palestinians. They talk about a two states process, not a two state solution. Two states is not, you know, the solution. It is only the beginning of a possible solution, in which, you know, finally the Palestinians can be recognized as state in the United Nations and have a diplomatic, you know, clout to be able to take them to the International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice in their own name, you know, not having to rely upon South Africa, you know, to present their prop their own position in the uh, judicial processes so i i i have a Finkelstein question Stein hasn't hasn't made it you know like he hasn't broken through you know he's okay. he's only sort okay. of you know like uh 
been able to make a name for himself. That's all he has been able to achieve. You know, I'm very much down on that. Okay. You know, and also, you know, the one state solution people, they won't even listen, you know, to uh to the Jewish Bund. They're into, you know, this uh uh idea that uh, liberals, you know, rad lib idea, you know, one state solution, everybody would have a vote, you know, and okay, you know, so then there would be equal number of votes of Palestinians and, and Jewish Israelis, you know, what would that solve? You know, like first thing they have to consider is the right of return of the Palestinian refugees. So are the uh Israelis, you know, going to agree to that? You know, are they going to vote for that? No. The Palestinians will vote for it, but it cannot be resolved. So it'll gun it's gonna be a 50-50 split. So how did they resolve that? Well, obviously by civil war, you know, in order to, to destroy as many of the other side as possible so that they can claim to be the majority. And then they can have another vote and then they would win. <laughs> you know, like, who, you know, who needs it? You know, that's totally ridiculous. There has to be the right of return for the Palestinian refugees by way of a federation so that all the Palestinians, you know, would <clears throat> vote for their own government and not for an Israeli government, you know, which would be a local government for their own purposes. And they would have their own security with their own police force, but they wouldn't need, you know, a military to go and invade any other, every other country on its periphery. That would be gone. But the Israelis, you know, they would have what they needed, you know, in a federation, and they would be agreeable to that eventually. And they could be convinced of that. That is that they would have their own language, their own schools, their own religion, and their own police force, you know. That's all they need. And they can be convinced of that. And uh, and yet that's not being proposed. You know, they're not being addressed. They're not being spoken to. They're only being denounced. So they're not going to react very well to that. They're not going to change their consciousness because they've been, you know, denounced as being uh, colonialists and, and squatters, you know. No, this merely <clears throat> enrages them. You have to be spoken to as a Jewish population by Jewish people. And then they can... You know, be educated. Otherwise, there's no way. And it continues well, on. It's I, not I an easy struggle. To... They're not going to win, you know, like in the next, you know, immediate period, or even not within the lifetime of the young, you know, demonstrators, you know, are saying, you know, like within our lifetime from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. No, I've been fighting this since 1968. And it's not easy. It's not going to end, you know, just because it's logical that it should end. No, it doesn't work like that. There has to be a different strategy, much more profound political strategy. Oh, the whole thing exa is exhausting. I'm exhausted. Oh, I, I think that um, what I'm hopeful for is that we can continue to use our meetings and our broadcasts through our network of allies and viewers to create the opportunity to create such a movement. There are people who watch this show, that people who share with others, and while our numbers are small, we're saying something that's that is that is unique to to the to need to to address the situation on an organizational level, not as a news broadcast. Yeah. You mentioned that normally in our in our show that we're about making things happen. Mm -hmm. Not as about reporting on news. Yeah. So is my hope that when we're off air and, and on air, we use these opportunities to build this movement because it is it it, it, it is lacking and it, it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Also, the movement has not yet taken on the war production facilities. You know, like there's all these factories, even here in Montreal, you know, there's an American factory making bombs for the Zionists to use in Gaza. Here, in Montreal, there's right. been a demonstration against general dynamics, but, you know, that should not be allowed. You know, they, those uh, factories should be shut down, like they've been shutting down Elbit in England. You know, they've been very successful yeah. campaign yeah, there. Palestine action there, good you know, point. you know, have been taking on, you know, with direct action, all of these war production facilities that in the various factories that Elbit has there, and they've shut down two factories. And they even have, you know, 16 of their militants who are in prison right now on the various false charges. So, uh, but they are 
uh, nonetheless continuing and they are successful in their direct action against war production. And that's, you know, also lacking in North America. It's, <clears throat> okay, student encampments, you know, that's one thing. But the source of the problem is the, um, the uh, military industrial complex of the United States of America. And uh, it is a U.S. imperialism that has to be taken on in addition to its client state of, of, the, of, of what they call Israel. And in fact, you know, the name Israel is the name of the Jewish people as a whole. It's not the name of a state. The Jewish people were never founded as a state. Moses was never even a king. You know, he was just a judge. You know, he was, a, a, you know, a uh, he he was you know just to, you know regarded as a wise man you know like he wasn't a king you know like there was no such thing you know like in the jewish you know political culture until the time of uh, samuel the prophet who reacted against the the populace you know like outcry calling for you know the uh, hebrew nation to be a nation like other all other nations and they wanted a state with a king and then Samuel replied, saying, you know, like, you want to have a king? What for? You know, like, uh, all a king is good for is taxes and war. <laughs> you know, like, but they still wanted to have a king. Okay, you know, like, just like they wanted to have a golden calf at one point, instead of, you know, having a code, a law code. So, uh, it's got to happen. It's only logical that it's, that, that, you know, that we would be able to speak to the Jewish people, you know, and the Israelis in order to turn them against fascism. And that should be possible because they should know, you know, what fascism is and the dead end of fascism. But right now they have nobody telling them that. They're not being educated. You know, the, the Jewish American protesters are not speaking to the Jewish people, you know, who are the source of the problem because they still offer a considerable pillar of support for the Zionist movement in the United States even. So, you know, it's got to be changed. There's got to be this big change, you know, and all of the uh, activists, you know, have to, got to encourage, you know, the Jewish uh, activists, you know, to speak up as Jewish people, not merely as Americans or whatever. That's the crucial point that I'm making here. That's it, that's all. <coughs> oh boy that's good I I think you said a lot and I appreciate the message and want to encourage our viewers and listeners to spread this message and to contact us to help build such a movement it won't be built without your participation we have to have people to make this happen yeah. Without people, the movement can't 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 be spread. So we need you to step up and embrace this movement. Give give your suggestions, and let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do it, but we have to be conscious of the need to do so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Speaking to you. Thank thanking you for listening to me, and. Uh, Hopefully, we'll be able to provide some better news in the coming week. Okay. Hello. Solidarity then. And we will continue and we are growing. That at least we can say for sure. And it's inevitable that we will be heard.